can having a fibroid cause bleeding such that I will not enter menopause or make it 12 months without bleeding? I'm 51 and deciding if I should get a hysterectomy for my fibroid or wait. My biggest fear is that I'll just keep bleeding unpredictably. <clears throat> Okay. So um, I like this question because it addresses something about fibroids and menopause. We used to think that fibroids shrink around menopause. That's not always the case. Many, many women who still experience troublesome fibroids um, after, uh, as they get into menopause and, you know, after they've entered menopause. Um, so it's not always the case that they will shrink. And don't forget that fibroids, you know, really are more common as we grow older. But this question addresses, you know, one of the issues, you know, when we make a diagnosis of menopause, we say that it is when you've not had a bleed for 12 consecutive months. That's the definition of menopause clinically. So we don't usually go and do blood tests. Um, it's not like being pregnant that you do a blood test and your beta HCG level is this that and that tells you definitively that you're pregnant no um usually and especially here in the uk where i practice usually in a woman who is maybe in her mid 40s you know late 40s approaching 50 who's coming in with symptoms that we recognize as menopausal symptoms like hot flashes or night sweats we wouldn't generally especially if she's well and there's nothing else when i say well i don't mean that hot fl flashes and night sweats don't make you feel unwell i just mean um it's not something that we consider to be an acute life-threatening concern. Um, when we add that together with experiencing irregular bleeding, then we will say this person appears to be around the menopause or perimenopause. And by the time she doesn't have any more bleeding and it's been a good 12 months since her last bleed, then she is in menopause or and then we don't do any blood tests. Simply we use a clinical diagnosis. That's what that means. But this lady in this question is saying that, how am I going to experience 12 months without bleed when I have fibroids? That's the question that she's, that's the problem that she's got. And let me answer that first, because you can have those two things happen together. The fact that you have fibroids does not mean that you will not go through the menopause. What is what is causing menopause is a decline in your ovaries function. That is what is bringing menopause. That's what is causing the menopause to happen. Your ovary function is declining. Estrogen and progesterone levels are slowly, slowly declining. And so the argument is, well, so fibroids that we have always said are related to those hormones why aren't the fibroids shrinking it's a lot more complex than that we don't know exactly what exactly what causes fibroids we know that hormones are associated but we think that there are other things involved in the fibroids development but i don't want to derail too much otherwise we won't answer this question properly so the point i'm trying to make is that it is possible that you are undergoing menopause and your ovarian activity is declining and you have fibroids and they may be causing irregular bleeding. So to answer the question, can having a fibroid cause bleeding so that I'll not enter? No, it's not. Having the fibroid is not going to prevent you from entering the menopause. Your menopause is going to happen because if your ovaries function are declining, the fibroids, which are abnormal, which are benign growths of your womb, um, they're not going to affect the function of your ovaries, they're not going to stop the ov ovarian decline. Of course, they're going to cause troublesome bleeding because their presence is disruptive to the whole anatomy and structure of the womb. Um, but they're not going to prevent that effect that your body as it ages will experience. So that's the first bit of that question. And then she says, I'm 51 and deciding if I should get a hysterectomy for my fibroid or wait. My biggest fear is that I'll just keep bleeding unpredictably. Okay, so, you know, I thought that was a really, a, a, you know, question that somebody has really gone and thought through. And I, after thinking about it a bit myself, I had a conversation with my colleague. Uh, people have met her before on um, a couple of videos in the channel. Those OGs, <laughs> my OGs on YouTube are familiar with Dr. Tolu, who is a gynecologist um, colleague who pops into the channel once in a while. I, I wanted to get her opinion about this and a few in, important points that she made. Now, I've just been explaining to you about how we don't routinely do blood tests to diagnose menopause, which is true. And the only time that we do it is if we're faced with symptoms and we want to be 
completely sure that what we're dealing with is menopause or it's not menopause. So for example, somebody who is quite young and who is having symptoms that look like menopause. So somebody who walks in about 30, 35 and they're having hot flashes and irregular periods and things like that, you want to sort of look at the hormone profile. So you will do those blood tests. But this is a recommendation from Dr. Uh, my, you know, my gynecology colleague, um, somebody like this who is presenting at this age and even though it looks as if it's menopause, you want to be you want to be sure that is what you're dealing with. So she she says the average age of menopause is between 48 and 52. And it's possible that, you know, the symptoms are pretty much fibroids causing troublesome bleeding and you're at the right age for menopause. However, it's important to do a blood test just to make sure that menopause is happening. And by the time at that age, you would expect to see a menopausal picture from those blood test results. Um, younger than that, it may be confusing, which is why we don't do it routinely, because the levels don't just zoo just like that. They sort of tend to bob up and down as they are reducing. So sometimes they can create a picture that's difficult to interpret. So a blood test is what is suggested just to see, okay, this woman, yeah, she's in the right age, this seems like menopause, but the blood test sort of gives you a confirmation for that. So that's one suggestion. The other thing that she said that was pretty useful as well, and again, this is why we don't, we usually don't want to specifically give any advice or anything for anyone on this channel because it's not the right thing to do. And there isn't much information that you can actually do it safely or ethically. The other thing that's important to do is she said that she's got fibroids. Well, you know, when last when was she scanned? When when last when 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 were these fibroids diagnosed? Um, were we sure that it's the fibroids alone causing the bleeding? Or it's not the fibroids, but it's something else. So what the gynecologist suggested as well is, you know, an urgent assessment. Because I especially if you're menopausal, this is now what we call postmenopausal bleeding. And it's something serious because when you're at menopause, you're not expected to have vaginal bleeding anymore. So she's saying that she's got fibroids. You know, I don't know when, how long she's had them for, when this last scan was and so on. So many questions that we don't know the answer to, but um, it's also important to have a look at the womb lining and to check that there's nothing else that's responsible that is causing the bleeding um, um, that she's experiencing. And that can be by doing an ultrasound scan or there can be a um a, a biopsy where they use a little instrument to get a bit of tissue of the womb lining in inner lining study it and decide what is responsible and important to do those things before we now have that conversation about hysterectomy which is the last part of her question where she says i'm deciding if i should get a hysterectomy for my fibroid or weight i mean the decision about hysterectomy is one that should be very carefully considered. Um, it's not just, oh, well, she's in her 50s and she doesn't need it anymore. I mean, that, I don't think that's an appropriate way to have that conversation because any kind of surgery carries its risk with it. So it shouldn't be done just for the sake of doing it. It should be that, well, this is the best and most effective option for dealing with this problem. And you can only come to that decision after you've had a conversation with your doctor, with your specialist and looked at the symptoms, looked at your medical background and looked at the options that are now left in terms of treating whatever it is that you're dealing with. And my gynecology colleague finished up by saying hysterectomy comes with its challenges, its risks and recovery after surgery. Really important to have that conversation with your gynecologist to make up your mind. To the lady who put in that question, thank you, I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you sort of sit down with your doctor to share your concerns and ask for more explanation about what's going on and what they think and what else they would suggest.